I mentioned that we need to have very clean power, but I also mentioned we had to have a very clean clock. We don't want a rubidium atomic clock. We don't care if we're exactly at the right second, you know, three years from now. We're not going to, we're not going to be playing that long. What we want is something that in a very short period of time is extremely accurate because if your data is a little early or a little late, that causes distortion. I'll give you a really simple example. It's, it is true and it generalizes, but it may not be obvious how simple it is. We can't go when we're doing waveform perfectly straight to the next thing and then perfectly straight down. There's always a little bit of a slope. So I'll just pretend the slope is like this. We zoomed in very precisely here. So sometime here we've got to decide that we're no longer at the bottom, we're at the top. In other words, that a bit has changed. If it's a clock, we have to decide when the clock edges. Well, where along here is that edge? We've got to know it very precisely. And if we're a little early or a little late, it changes when the clock happens. If we're if the voltage that we're looking at is a little high or a little low, it changes when it happens. And so keeping this to be as consistent as possible is addressing jitter. The more notebook-like of us say the audio files live in fear of jitter. Well, that's perhaps an overstatement on that side, but I'd also say that some of the hardcore engineers that aren't audio files don't take jitter seriously enough. There's all these really, really precise things that were used, Sonnet and all this kind of stuff. GPS is a great example of an incredibly precise system. And it wouldn't work if they lost some bits. So they do all kinds of work to make sure the jitter never gets bad enough that they get the wrong data. But in audio land, if the bit was half late, we wouldn't get the wrong data, but it wouldn't come at the right time and our wave would have overshot in, in DSD and PCM, that step would have been too long, and the next step would be a little too narrow. So jitter matters more to the ear than it does to a piece of electronics trying to find a bit. So, and I should also say that a lot of people worry about jitter on their CPU, in their disk, in the network, on the original recording. Jitter doesn't matter until you get right to the very point that you ch go from the digital to the analog and that and what exact time that happens. And that time has to be correct. All the stuff before can be taken care of theoretically with a buffer. And people indeed build products that take care of the, that put a buffer in there and it works somewhat. But after that buffer's done, then that jitter creeps back in. It can show up because they have a bad clock. It can show up because they have a bad power supply. It can show up because they're plugged into a different outlet than I am, and that changes that level that you might be doing the comparison. There's any kind of distortion on the clock, a cable that's too long or too short ringing, a bad receiver, all add jitter. And that's, to a large extent, what the differences are you hear in different kinds of cables, in Toslink versus AES versus I squared S versus USB. Now, the, you know, they're all different technologies, but they all have their own problems dealing with jitter. I know I'm going to get crap about talking about rubidium clocks as not being important. And I'm going to answer that in two interesting ways, I think. One of them is they actually aren't very good with phase noise because their whole goal in life is to be extremely accurate over a long period of time. They actually use much cheaper local clocks to fill in the details in the meantime. They're using the rubidium to make sure they're dead nuts accurate 10 years from now. That doesn't matter in audio. Now, I'm not saying rubidium clocks are bad. In fact, I'm just guessing. I'm not, I wouldn't go on record necessarily as believing this, but I think the reason a rubidium clock sounds a lot better is they took care building it. It's not that it's rubidium. It's that they use better components, better wires going to your thing, and they get less jitter. But it's not the best way of getting less jitter. If you go to an excellent crystal manufacturer and say, I want lower phase noise, and you, say, and you say, I don't care about accuracy, and they might look at you funny, but they know how to do it. It doesn't matter if over time you're going, you know, three parts per million too fast, three parts per million too slow. Nobody's got that accurate of perfect pitch. What really matters is having that low phase noise with an excellent quality clock. And the other things, trying to get it perfectly accurate three years from now, just don't matter. So don't, 
Don't tell anybody I said that rubidium clocks suck. They don't, but I wouldn't use one. 